Okay. So if we, if here's my, here's my you calendar. Does that come up all right? Yep. That's yep. Okay. So this is, this is all the field days I've sort of been to all the stuff I've listened to vets talk about and, and learnt from, from other farmers. And I've sort of put it into a, um, into a sheep reproduction calendar and everything hinges, everything hinges off your mating date. Um, so if, if, if we're sitting there right now and we put, put our ram out on the 1st of April, we're at this point here. Okay. And I've got here earliest to underfeed ewes. Okay. So after the, after the, First 15 days or 20 days, your ewes should have been going, slowing right down and onto maintenance. And now we're, um, right now with our ewes, we're sitting at 55 days uh, post, post the ram introduction. Um, and, and this is a period where you, c you can put a bit of pressure on, on ewes and restrict ewe intake. The, the big um, disclaimer around that is that you have to be doing it with the right ewes. Okay, so I've got here, can restrict ewes in, in condition score three and above, make them work, and they can tolerate below maintenance and less for short periods as long as they're still at condition score three at lambing. So the first thing you want to be doing now, and I'm doing it with a lot of clients, is you need to be going through your ewes and taking out, taking out the ones that are below condition score three. So go through your ewes. All you need in your, in your head is, is she a three or not? Uh, if you don't know what a three feels like, get a vet out, get someone experienced out to, to come and do it with you and chalk all the ones under three. And that, they need to come out. You need to get them out of the mob pressure um, and you need to allocate them more feed and more high quality feed. Um, the, beauty about, the beauty about doing this, about, you know, it's too easy now to, we're short of feed, it's too easy now to relax, box all our ewes up and just, mooch along in our winter rotation because it's easy. Um, but if you really want to save some feed and manage the condition score, take that tail end you out. Uh, what have I got here? And the biggest, the biggest thing for me here is that there's no reproductive advantage in terms of, I mean, your scanning's done. Your, 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 uh, yeah, your scanning's already set. Uh, you're not going to get any, if you just keep feeding the condition score three plus you more and more and more, um, there's no reproductive advantage. It might give you, a, it may give you a buffer at lambing if you have a tight spring, but you, you're not going to get better lamb survival. All the science is around three. So there's no, I'll put here, there's no point in feeding those fatties. So if you keep all your skinny ewes and your fat ones in the same mob above three and think, I know I've got a tail end. I can see it. I'm just going to keep feeding all of my ewes like snot. What's going to happen is those good feeders, those ones that can handle the social and mob pressure, will get fatter and fatter, and the other ones will fall off, even if you are poking, poking feed at them. And it's actually, a, it's actually a big waste of feed. So when you've got your skinnies out at this time of the year, you know, you know that you can push those ones quite hard, those other ones quite hard, and the real good thing, if you've got staff or you're by yourself, is trying to get them, um, trying to get the staff to understand what, what the grazing residuals, so that's what the sheep are leaving behind, kind of need to look like for your fat use. And, and once they get a feel of, of that, then, you know, like it, it takes time to get over to U rotations on hill country. So visually, you can be driving along a ridge and you might be doing a shift to cattle, but you look over to your U rotation and you go, you know, you might have seen the colour change a little bit. And, and you might think, oh, no, I know, I know that I've got good fat U's in that mob, so they can do another day. They're fine. Whereas if you haven't, if you haven't got those skinny U's out below three, you're always on that, there's always that tension. Oh, you know, when I went, went through the gate last time, I saw I had a tail developing. Oh, I've got to go over and shift them. And straight away, you're pinching a day off that rotation. You're not saving a day. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you're wasting feed keeping these fatties in the same mob. And it's going to take a lot more feed to lift the average of it up. So just to quantify, um, just to quantify that, I reckon this, um, does that come up on the screen? Yep. All good, Richmond. 
You know, those condition score three and above ones, all they need is maintenance and less at times. You know, it's amazing, you know, what, what are you, what those good ewes can handle and how much feed you can save. So this is the Beef and Lamb Feed Smart app. Just, so just to quantify, if you leave those skinny ones in and you're trying to feed everything to, to lift the condition score versus taking them out, this is the sort of feed you can save. So if we go here on this calculator and go mixed age U, the start date, so this is where we're at right now, 27th of May. And I'm going to say, I had some notes here before because I mucked around with this before. Where did I have it? Um, I'm going to say the use are 62 kilos. Okay. Um, and the growth rates, nothing, zero. We're just maintaining them. Okay. So these are your condition score three. You know, they might be 65 kilos. You can muck around with that. I'm calling them 62 kilos or a smaller frame sheet. We're just maintaining them. We're just trying to hold their condition. Um, put the mating date in, because that'll drive what, what their feed demand is. First of April, uh, I'm gonna say a scan one, they've, they've, they've scanned 170, the growth is zero. So, so these ewes here, are all they need to maintain is 1.28 kilos of dry matter. Richmond, the 1.28, um, just wanna cover off there, I mean, that's 2% of body weight. You know, like for people that, that might not know, do you want to cover that just very quickly, the 2 and the 3%, those sort of things? Yeah, so there's some, there's some real quick, rough and ready um, percentage of body weight you can use to, to derive the feed intake, feed intake from an animal. Um, this here probably explains it well for a ewe. But roughly what Gary said is right. 2% of body weight is maintenance. So real simple maths, um, 60 kilo U at 2% needs 1.2 kilos to maintain her body weight. So at the moment, all your U's need, because uh, not far into pregnancy, is 2% of body weight. 65, well, 70 kilo U's eating 1.4 kilos. So 2% we use for maintenance on animals. So you might be, um, yeah, might be your, your U's or your cows. And then growth, growth is 3%. So a 60 kilo U growing, uh, needs sort of 1.8 percent and then when you get through the lactation um, or growing trade stock really fast it's it's four percent of um, live weight or lactating use um, can be up to five percent so give you an idea a 60 kilo u at lact, right in the middle of lactation five percent of your body weight should be eating three kilos of, of dry matter a day uh, so that those figures there are just some rough and ready um, to, to work out what an animal's eating. Um, where are we? So, this is the, probably the most accurate you can get. All I'm trying to do here is just show you maintaining a ewe versus um, trying to lift a skinny ewe. So, if we say that these ewes are in a mob, right? You go here and go allocation calc, and it's got a really nifty little calculator saying days in paddock. Click that. Say I've got 700 of these ewes I'm going to maintain. My paddock size is seven. My feed covers at the open are um, on your sword stick. They're about three and a half centimetres, so 1,400 cover. Yeah, three and a half centimetres, yeah, 1,400 kilos of cover. And I want to take it down to, say, uh, 900 kilos of dry matter. Okay, which, which I know down to about 800 kilos of dry matter or one centimetre, you, you, below that you're starting to restrict the intake that a ewe can physically get around and eat during the day. Um, so what, what that's saying is, um, well, who wants to say what that's saying? I guess considering I'm, I'm unmuted, you're putting it on me to say it. Yeah, what's the saying, Gary? Any, anyone's got any questions uh, in the chat box, but what, you, what you're saying there is that mob have got three days. If they're left yep. any longer than three days, you're going under 900 kilos of cover. It means they're 
they're being restricted or eating dirt. Yep. And it just gives you, you know, like it, it's saying that that, I mean, nothing's perfect with, with farming. You get some cold weather and the utilisation goes down, but it just shows that on maintenance, those conditions score three girls, all they need is 1.28 and, and, and three days. But let, let's, let's turn it around and say that um, we don't know, we know that there's 20 or 30% light use in that 700. We've, we've got a gut feeling. We've, we've been on rotation and we can see, you know, we can see the ewes are starting to lose condition, but we haven't condition scored them. So we've got 700 ewes, which we know have got some light ones. So we're like, bugger, we have to push the, we have to push the go button and we're just going to feed them all to try lift those few light ones. So let's go back. Let's go back and say that we've still got 62 kilo ewes and we know, um, we know over eight weeks we've got to lift half a condition score, um, which is four kilos. So if I go 4,000 4, divided by uh, how many days in eight weeks? Go brain, 60. Say we've got to, let's just do simple math. Say we've got to grow them at um, 100 grams a day. Okay, see what happened to that demand. Okay, so we've got zero, that's maintenance. 100 grams a day, they eat a lot more, which makes sense, and they're eating the high quality feed. So really to, to lift the tail, if it's still in the mob, we're going to have to keep pumping all the ewes and, and give them access to this. Now look, now look what happens to those 700 ewes in the paddock. So, so, so left in there three days, they're back to that 1.28. They're not gaining the 100 grams a day. Yeah, or, or probably the way I'd look at it, if, if you're trying to lift the whole mob and you haven't taken the light ones out, you've, you're, um, you're chewing for, you've only got two days in that paddock and you, you, you're not pinching days on your rotation to get you out the other end. And your, um, fatty, your fatties are getting fatter, Richmond, to quote you. Exactly. Fatties are getting fatter for no, no reproductive uh, reason. And you there's you always... Mentioned, you mentioned yeah. just before half a condition score equals four kilos. I guess that's a bit of, a, bit of an average on use. It's a bit of a, a guide, but it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all in terms of a meter, is it? No, nah, it's pretty rough and ready. Yeah, um, but, but I mean, a, a, some vets say five, some say four, but it's a good... It's a good Rough indication. Yeah, of course, your breed will make, or, you know, like if you're, if you're um, mature weights or you've got bigger ewes, it'll be five or could even be six. Yep. Cool. You'd be surprised, you'd be surprised if you take light ewes out and they might be sprinkled in with some in lamb hoggets that you're feeding like snot. They might be sprinkled in, you know, for refugia purposes even with... um a mob of trade lambs and I have no issue with seeing mixed age ewes that you're lifting the tail on and with trade lambs or wiener heifers um, you'd be surprised giving ad lib and high ME high ME tucker how well um, how well they'll, they'll how quickly they'll pick up Just a question, what about um, crops Richmond um, I guess crops is a fairly open thing because you can have high quality crops and low quality crops but is, is that something you know, that you should be looking at and putting uh, light use on the crop? Yeah, I mean, I, personally, I think winter crops are a fantastic um, fantastic tool for having scanned and lamb use on, uh, especially post, post scanning. Um, you just have to get the, the crop residuals and mob sizes right and, you know, if you're going to lift condition. I don't really know... Yeah, I haven't got a lot of experience with putting ewes on there now. Um, probably a lot of the winter crops are shut up now, waiting. But certainly for holding condition and even lifting condition on some light ewes, a crop, when the ewes come out of a scanning crate, I wouldn't be putting triplets on there. Uh, they go back too, too much. I'll be putting twins and singles. Um, but yeah, certainly, certainly an option. I guess it comes back to that you talked about before, that high quality feed, that ad lib feed, something like a you know, a, a good quality kale crop or a rape, even Swedes, are, are, are going to be higher ME than, than some saved pasture or, or hill country pasture. So they're going to do better, aren't they? Yep, totally. 
Yeah. Now, and someone else made the comment here that uh, I've heard Paul Kenyon say that a fat you is not going to let the skinny yous eat because she, because you know, yeah, she's not going to let the skinny you uh, feed because she needs it more. So that's a bit like it's a bit like fighting you at the buffet. I reckon in my experience, Richmond, you're always going to beat me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially after lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Like, uh, I, I've done a lot of asking around and and witness on farms and all that. Like, tailing and ewes are a lot of it is, is unexplained. And all I put it down to is the ewe beside another ewe is its own worst enemy. Um, there's just some ewes are extremely good at, at, you know, they're quick, they're mobile, they get around, they pick up all the high me feed. You know, a ewe might have a pleurisy, where, which it's not as mobile. It might have a, a foot issue, uh, might have teeth, teeth issues. And I'm not just talking about low teeth. Could have an animal health reason. But all the studies I've looked at, the large reason why ewes were tail end was just mob pressure. And, and I always point to people's um, pet sheep. You look at some of the paddocks pet sheep are in, like they're like on the, on the boards on dirt and there might only be three or four enough fat as mud. And I reckon it's just a lot of it's that social pressure and that, and that social, that structure. Um, so even just taking ewes out of a large mob and just giving them space. So say for instance, this picture here, is my screen still sharing? Yep, you're good there, yep. Yeah, it's good this picture. picture here, you know, the, these will be the fatties, the condition score three and above, and the, the light ones are ahead, you know, just free range, picking all the high ME feed, and these it's girls like here are... Yeah, if you haven't got a crop, or if you haven't got something like that, you know, taking, you know, 100 out of a mob and putting them a, a paddock ahead in the rotation would, would yep. be a way to do that, wouldn't it? And in, in, in your photo there? Yep, fully. And not not having them in here because um, these ewes here are being pushed pushed quite hard. They've got a few steers in with them to get the the, the rotation right. Um, but yeah, your light ewes certainly aren't going to once they get pushed past a few days, they're not going to pick up um, on this on this taggy sort of cattle feed. And it's quite um, easy to let them back in too. If you left them like that in, in front, then they've picked up a bit of condition two or yep. three weeks later in that rotation. It's easy to let them back into that mob if they, if they have picked up. Yeah. And I've this got someone, is, just, someone just said to me, they're jealous of the feed in your photos, Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a fair bit of, this is on my um, block at home, there's a fair bit of um, supplements that went into that and some autumn nitrogen to get that sort of feed. And um, yeah, the ewes are definitely on lockdown at the moment to try build a build a better head. Yeah. But I was, talk, I was talking about grazing residuals. This isn't a very good photo because the ewes... Um, actually stayed in here another couple of three days longer but it's amazing what sort of residuals you can push those those heavier girls on um yeah and i know massey talk about 800 kilos is where you start to really restrict restrict use which on your autumn or winter sword stick it's about a centimeter i don't know if you can um About a centimetre where you're, where you're starting to restrict use. Okay, so we'll move move on. Um, so you want to be crimping. You want to be crimping days now. You want to be saving a day here and there. You know, get in a few days instead of. You always say to people that feeling you have before set stocking, where you you you're on that tight rope. And you're like, oh, I can't shift my ewes because I'm not going to have any feed to set stock on and I want to try a pinch a day here. And you feel real uneasy about holding ewes up, which is, can be detrimental. You want to have that feeling now. Like have that real uncomfortable feeling now, especially with the ewes you can do it to. Um, you got, what you're saying, good, good condition score ewes at the moment. Yep. You don't be afraid to, 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 to crimp those few days now because that will actually benefit you later on. I mean, I'm, I'm talking very high level. Like, you, you obviously need to, if you're very, very short and a lot shorter than normal, you need to quantify your position with a feed budget. And you, you, may, not, you may not have any extra feed. To, like, a business I went to the, uh, yesterday, the feed covers are so short, the ewes are starting to fall away. There's sort of 40% that are below three. But we haven't got a lot of space even to pick those up. So we're, we're making decisions around selling Scandalam ewes 
uh, grazing some dry hoggets out and potentially pre lamb nitrogen. So you, you need to have the feed to lift them. Key is, is your staff need to know your residuals. So if you're the stock manager or the manager and you're happy with ewes being fed like that and you're sort of monitoring them, let your staff know what, what you're grazing down to. Because the worst thing is is, is is staff that get regimented or people who get regimented and go, I shift my ewes every morning, there are two days in that paddock. You want to be nimble and on your feet and trying to crimp days here and there. Rich, um, we just jump in there. We've got about 10 minutes before we wrap up, just a bit of a time check. I've yep. got a couple of questions come in, but I'll let you carry on then. Yep. Um, where are we? Okay, I'll jump in with a question there, Richmond. You, uh, you, you made the comment there before about um, pre lamb nitrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, comments on that is, you know, how do you make the decision whether that's a good idea or not, or whether that pays and doesn't have any negative impact? Okay, can I, can I park that? Because I'll cover it just in a minute. Okay, cool. Yep. yep. Okay, so staff need to know the residuals. Uh, there is... I challenge anyone with six months plus wool to, to draft ewes on the gate. I, you can't do it. You can't fine tune it. You've got to put your hand on them. You'll get the real fats and the real skinnies. Through the winter, though, once you start doing this, pushing these uh, other ewes a bit harder, it's certainly a lot easier if they're second shorn or they're winter shorn. Um, one guy I learned from, he counts, when he's pushing these ewes hard, he'll count 10% um, of the mob. So if it's you know, 700, he'll, he'll count 70, and he'll, he'll get a percentage of how many of those are starting to drop off visually. Um, and, and that's how he tracks how hard he's pushing his use. A lot of people will just, you know, it doesn't take long to cut out half of the mob or a quarter of the mob, whip them in the satellite yards and put a hand on them and just feel if you're pushing them too hard. Okay, so let's go back to that U calendar. So I think we've done to death, we've done to death about pushing, you know, knowing which ewes you can push now to, to, um, to save feed. It's the easiest time from now to scanning to pick up a light ewe. It is always difficult post scanning. You can do it, but you've got to have feed. Um, we won't go about, we won't go into the sharing. Um, okay, and scanning is your next big time that I, I, I want you to, it sounds like a lot of work, but you can manage it with your current uh, labor, labor if you're proficient. Some people I'd say for the first time, get another labor unit in because it's the value in it. But I, I recommend to people to put to condition school all their ewes going to a scanning crate because they come into a choke point. They come into a choke point. You're normally there talking to the scanner and forgetting to put sheep in there for them. Um, but you're normally there pushing them up on the bum and it's really quick just to put your hand on them and chalk them whether they are a three or not. Are they below three, chalk them, ask your scanner to, to, to separate them. You'll put the scanning mark on them, separate them with your smallest mob, which is normally, well, hopefully your dries. Um, and then just draft them off afterwards. So at scanning, you wanna be condition scoring your use, figuring out how many you've got to lift. I'd say this is a year to identify lates. If you haven't used uh, crayons on your rams, Lates, lates a huge value, and I'll talk about why. Um, I think in a year like this, singles, singles, some you know, some people put singles out, separate singles four weeks before lambing. In a tight year, I'd be taking them out at scanning. Uh, to me, condition score on a single ewe, I don't, I don't care about. Um, if she, if she's a two and a half, and her milk production's dropped by twenty percent, who cares? She's only feeding a single lamb. And, uh, and she'll put it back on. You know, she's only got one lamb to feed uh, versus a twin. Um, I think this year will be the year to do a fecal egg count on your ewes. Uh, there's a lot of ewes under a lot of pressure on, on short covers. And I learned that from the droughts in the Hawke's Bay in 07. Some of the egg counts coming through the vet clinic were, were, were massive. Um, and, it, and it might just... I spoke with Trevor Cook yesterday and I said, oh, Trevor, so coming out of dry conditions, you know, what, where are the egg counts at? And he says, he says you do be careful because there's been some come across their desk. He said that have had massive um, explosions in counts. Um, you know, and, and he said, so you can't just automatically assume that, that it's good and that dry conditions will take care of it. 
Okay, so that's scanning. That's how you want to be thinking. Uh, progressing on. I don't reckon there's, like, the top operators I, I come across, they have real attention to detail and they're extremely anal about, um, oh, excuse the word, extremely careful around yarding use. Like, they, I work for a guy who would get, if he came down and you'd taken too big a cut of use from the holding paddock or where there was some feed off a hill and the ewes were hanging around for ages, they get very agitated. And it sort of hit home when I remember Trevor Cook talking about before lambing, you know, um, not early on in the piece, but four to five weeks out from lambing, you've got to be extremely careful how long you yard um, uh, breeding ewes for. And, and, and this, you just have to be organized. Like if you're pre-lamb shearing, think about um, the impact stress and off feed has on, on these ewes. Um, and, you know, you might share your multiples first, um, your singles last, you know, get them in and out of the shed, uh, push the limits. Some of these contractors are taking the mick uh, with how long they're telling you to empty out in lamb use. Um, you know, you've got to be reasonable for the shearers, but you get too late. You know, some of them are asking for, for huge time off feed. Uh, be extremely careful because what, what happens with these ewes when they're off feed is... Um, a toxin called beta hydroxybutyrate uh, builds up, and um, it, it um, what it does is it can go through. You won't actually see it. You could have ewes in the in the yards for a bit too long when you're vaccinating because you haven't been organised with your needles and you run out of vaccine. And and these ewes are in the yards too long. They create this toxin. It goes through the placenta, and um, and it actually impacts the lamb. It doesn't kill the lamb, but it um. It, it makes that lamb born a bit dozy and slow to stand. Um, and this may not have an impact, but in a storm, it could be, yeah, it could make a big difference. So I'm, I'm very careful of use off feed. Uh, Organised, take cuts off the grass. Okay, so feeding, you know, people, when they're getting really tight, how much do we have to feed these ewes? Um, so that's why I've put this date here, 30 for June. Massey came out with some good stuff from day 90 to day 133. Um, they sort of talk about adequate for a, for a multiple or a twin ewe is 1,200 kilos of dry matter. Um, 1,200 kilos of dry matter down to about 800. And you, you're, not, you're not underfeeding that uh, ewe. 800 is pretty short, so you've got to be careful of that. Um, then. You can see here the next state, um, just be careful. Like in a year like this, if you've got a lot of light ewes and you're going to be short of feed, be real careful vaccinating too close. I've, I've seen businesses who have vaccinated, ewes have hung around, they've had a snap of cold weather and they've gone out and they've had down ewes with, um, with milk fever all over the show. So just be aware of, you know, there are products out there that you can do vaccinate your clostridials, you know, six weeks pre-lamb. Um, and even some four weeks pre-lamb. Uh, winter nitrogen. Okay, so I, it's the cheapest form of supplement. Um, it works. I used it for three years on the place I managed. I, I worked with a guy. We have a 50-odd discussion group members who, you know, 50% of them will use pre-lamb nitrogen. Um, you know, people talk about bearings and, and issues. I don't see it. All I see is that, is a brilliant tool if you're short, a brilliant tool if you're short to maximize this, okay? So you heard me talk about the impact on weaning weight and lamb survival if, you, if multiples lose condition three weeks pre-lambing. And it's always tight. You're always on that set stocking tightrope, but it's hard to hold multiples that three to four weeks before lambing. And, um, you not only need to have them lamb in condition score three, but they, you need to be trying to hold them, okay? So this date here is absolutely critical. Your early twin ewes or your first cycle twin ewes, need to, you need to hit the go button. And what I reckon the key for winter nitrogen is you need to time it around this. I don't see any point in a big whoosh of grass from nitrogen three weeks after they've lambed because the damage is done. I'd rather see 
short growing grass fast under under ewes and trying to not underfeed ewes that three weeks pre lamb. So then there's coming, old, there's, there's an argument always, Richmond, that you're better off to go earlier and get a, and get potentially less of a response than you are to go later and get more of a response because of what you just said there. That's that you've missed that opportunity in terms of that early, haven't you? Yeah, you'll never catch that. You'll never catch that lactation back up like it's. Well, you lose weight on yep. You lose weight on those ewes three to four weeks. Impacts lamb survival and your milk, so it's gone. So, um, I work work for a fur company. There's always good arguments, but I reckon four to eight weeks before lambing, because um, it takes how, how long, it takes four to six weeks to get a response, depending on soil temperature, and um, you know on the on the place I managed, which wasn't a real early country, but wasn't late cold like Taipei or late country uh we were putting urea on about the 15th of july uh depending on soil temperature and i always remember um ants roberts talking about if the soil temps um six degrees and rising at 9 a.m then you then you're good to go obviously got to be careful with really really wet soils and low soil temps i don't know gary you're a fit rep for a long time what what are, what are your recommendations around soil temperature yeah, well, I was I was an Anne's Roberts trained person, so I can back that one up. And it's about monitoring that and getting it on that rising temperature. And, and remembering that it can take, as you said before, four to six weeks before it actually kicks in and has an, has an effect. So it's, it's, it's thinking ahead. You can never predict, predict the weather, but it's monitoring that soil, soil temperature, knowing where that feed situation and getting in and getting it early. Yep. So in terms of the cost benefits, there's been heaps of work done like you only need to look at the impact on lamb survival, um, which can be worse in, in bad weather and the lamb weaning weight. And um, we do a lot of benchmarking and we've got a lot of businesses that are very profitable year and year and, and not every year, but a big part of their system is pre-lamb nitrogen. If they can see they're going to be underfeeding ewes and not have the covers under the ewes. Um, it's your cheapest form of supplement. The next thing you might do is graze dry hoggets out. Uh, that may cost you 20 cents a kilo of dry matter uh, to graze your dry you hoggets out. Nitrogen, I don't know, I haven't done the figures recently what it's worth, but yeah, and and get it on. Um, if you've got access problems, helicopters, pretty competitive if you get get the right location. Um, so the dates in your diary, that, that three weeks pre-lamb, the 6th of the 8th, that is when you need to be really smart with how you're managing your use. So, that's when um, your singles, if you haven't already got them out, they need to be out. They need to be behind the rotation doing the hard yards or down the laneways. Your, um, your late use, like you think, uh, um, uh, a cycle's 17 days. So second cycle use, you know, that, that's 17 to 20 days. It could be three weeks behind. So, you know, those lates, those lates that are marked by the scanner or marked by your harness, at that date, they should come out. And that, they're amazing. Like that, their feed demand is, is nowhere near the others. Put them with your singles. Put them on a shorter rotation. Um, and then just the fine that fine tuning, that fine tuning around set stocking is just massive. Like um, it's always hard, but I'm always at that getting close. I like to break break my use down and say, right, here's. 200 hectares of my maternal twin country. I know there's going to be six and a half twins to the hectare. I'll break that mob down. Um, it might be a pre-lamb vaccination. I'll break that, lamb, that, that, that mob down and I'll put those ewes on that 200 hectare rotation and I'll start going round. So I've taken the pressure off them. I'll start going round and I might drop a paddock out. So I'll drop a paddock out drop another paddock out, go around, go around, let those paddocks come up, and then you might put them all into those paddocks before and then let them sort of, you know, and then start spreading them. I mean, it's all about that that importance of uh, that two to three weeks pre-lamb. 